Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this brand new series of videos I will show you all the good stuff about Aruba's dynamic segmentation. I will start off by explaining all the basics around dynamic segmentation because if you understand the basics it will be so much easier to understand how all of this is configured and managed. In the first couple of videos I will tell you everything about roles and in what way they can be deployed because this is the core concept of dynamic segmentation. Let's dive straight into this and start with user roles. In legacy networks, network access security is very much based on the identity of the device that is connecting to the network. This is typically a MAC address or a username password combination and for advanced network access it might even be a certificate. Based on this identity the user is granted access and typically the port is assigned to a VLAN with maybe an additional access list. This type of network access is very straightforward and easy to deploy but it does have a lot of limitations. For example typically granting access is mainly based on assigning a VLAN. Another limitation is that the information that is provided by the client device is very limited, as said, typically a MAC address or a user identity. Another limitation is that the only additional security enforcement is an optional access list on the access port, which is basically a stateless firewall. There is no further security enforcement other than a firewall that might be present somewhere in the network. Because all the configuration is stored locally on the switch, you will get very large configuration files. And finally, mobility might also be a limitation. Imagine that you have a laptop connected to a port of a switch somewhere in the network. And then the next day you are working in a different building connecting to a different switch. This means that the access security configuration, including VLAN assignment, has to exist on that switch as well. This makes network configurations very complex and large. With all these limitations, network administrators are hesitant to roll out campus-wide access security. Dynamic segmentation is a solution that solves all of this by using roles instead of straightforward VLAN assignment. Now let me explain what a role is. A role is an object that is assigned to a device based on its identity. This identity can be a lot of things. It can be a MAC address, a username password combination or a certificate. However, an access device can send much more information than you think. Let me show this by checking out a simple device that performs MAC authentication. Now there is a lot of information that is sent by the device and by the switch to which the device is connected. This information can be fingerprinted by the authentication service and based on that information a role can be assigned to that device. This role contains all the access information for that device. It can be a VLAN and an ACL, just like what you have with the legacy access security systems, but it can be much more than that. A role can also contain a policy. In this policy you can define various QoS parameters like setting a DSCP or an 802.1p value, perform rate shaping by assigning a maximum speed and much more. A role can also contain a PoE profile. For example, if you are authenticating an IP camera that requires a certain amount of PoE and you want this PoE guaranteed, this can be part of a role. By using roles you can really simplify the way that clients obtain access to the network. Instead of a diverse number of attributes that you send in a traditional environment to just the role or role name when using user roles. Now where are these roles configured and deployed? You have two options. The first option is on the switch itself. It's very, really very straightforward. You create the user role on the switch and in that user role context you configure all the parameters that you want for this role. So if for example you want this role to be used for a captive portal, you configure the captive portal redirection URL. So when this role is applied to an authenticated user, that user will be redirected to a captive portal page. Another cool thing is, is that you can configure what we call an initial role. This initial role comes in very handy if the device authentication fails. So what happens in that situation is that an initial role is applied. 
the Aruba OS switches have a default initial role that basically denies all traffic. But you can create a local user role that becomes your initial role when authentication fails. In that role you could have a policy that allows connectivity to certain sites or services. Having local user roles gives you a lot of flexibility, but it also has some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that if you would like to have mobility, in other words, if you want the roles to move with your access clients, you have to configure the local user roles on all the switches. In a larger network, this might become cumbersome in case you have a lot of local user roles. Now for this, we have a solution which is called downloadable user roles. With downloadable user roles, the role configuration exists on ClearPass. In other words, the full user role configuration is done on ClearPass and after successful authentication, the role is dynamically pushed to the switch through SSL. In this scenario, there is no requirement for any user role configuration on the switches anymore. Everything is done on ClearPass. In one of the upcoming videos in this series, I will explain exactly how this works and how this is configured. It's really a one-time setup to allow secure communication between ClearPass and the switch, including the deployment of a certificate. And all of this can be automated. Once that is set up, your switch configuration doesn't have to be touched anymore. And this really simplifies the switch configurations and you have a centralized role assignment using ClearPass. There's another cool feature of the user role, which is the secondary user role. So don't be confused, the content that you've seen in this video doesn't change. The secondary user role is just a part of the user role feature, uh, and this involves the mobility controllers. But more on that in the next video. So thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, a thumbs up is very welcome. If you have any suggestions, idea or questions, please let us know. And subscribing to this channel will make your life so much easier because there's so much great content available on this channel. And more content is added frequently. So see you later and have a great day.